We'll start this off with a brief history of firearms. The earliest firearm on history is called the Fire Lance. Essentially, this was little more than a heavy cardboard tube packed with gunpowder and rocks attached to the rear end of the spear. It should be remembered that originally the gun was put on the bayonet, not the bayonet on the gun. Uh, it, was, it was disposable. You fired this thing, you threw it away, you grabbed the new one, and you, you went back to fighting. This image is actually from 10th century China, 1900s. We have a fire lance up here being used by this fellow and a grenade down here. So firearms and gunpowder has been along a very long time. Would you please continue? This is pretty much the final evolution of the fire lance, the phalanx charging fire board invented by the Chinese. This was actually made of metal and reusable. Early Europe. Please continue. Gunpowder reached Europe through contact with the Turks probably sometime in the 1300s. It almost immediately showed up on the far side of Europe around the same time as the hand cannons. Uh, only less than 100 years later, the Ottomans were actually issuing matchlocks as standard issue firearms to the Janissaries. So basically the first stand true long arm in history. Now here's a, a commonly held misbelief that Japan never grasped guns. That is completely wrong. We don't know exactly when it reached. They could have had the fire lance in the 13, uh, 1200s, but we know the Portuguese brought them in the, in the, the 1500s. It was described in 1560 as the, the most important arm. It, he went on to say that, uh, that everyone should basically just give up swords and spears and move to armaments. The Japanese even went as far as to produce more guns than any singular European nation. They managed to figure out how to make a matchlock fire it not accurately at night, load it in the rain, and they even developed better matches than the Europeans. Ironically, the Portuguese took the flint lighter from the Japanese, went back to Portugal, and then made the flint lock, which was a progression of the matchlock. Please. Go ahead. One more. The big issue with Japan and firearms came when Tokugawa took over in 1603. He almost immediately declared firearms disarmable weapons because he didn't like the idea that any peasant could pick one up, train for a few weeks, and then take out a skilled swordsman. Great equalizer, right? Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately for Japan, not long after, we see this huge rapid development. Go back. Rapid development in the West. We have the back arrow. That one. This huge rapid development in the West, we have the first breech loading rifle, which was a black powder. You would unscrew the bottom, pour in your, put in your bullet, pour in your powder, screw it back up, mm. cock the hammer, pour it, prime your pan, and it was ready to fire. 17, all right, not long after that, we had the first paper cartridge, which had a uh, primer actually built into the paper cartridge, and would fire a needle through the cartridge to set off the primer. Uh, 1848. Okay, in 1848, the first metallic cartridge called the rocket ball was invented. Essentially, it was basically a bullet that was hollowed out and a primer put on the end. It was really weak, it was really pathetic. Uh, Smith and Wesson tried to work with it for a while, and eventually it ended up in Henry, uh, Mr. Henry's hands, who eventually evolved into the Henry Repeater. Uh, 1862, we had the first Gatling gun invented by Richard Gatling, who was attempting to create a weapon so powerful it would end war forever. Unfortunately, he just gave us a whole new class of rapid fire death. <laughs> the first repeating rifle, Benj as I said, by Benjamin Henry, was actually an evolution of the earlier volcanic repeaters. If you played, um, what was that Wild West game? Gun. We had a volcanic repeater. Gun the volcanic. Yeah. Volcanic. yeah. The, the actual volcanic was pretty pathetic, but it eventually evolved into the Benjamin he, uh, Benj uh, the Henry Wright repeating rifle, also known as the 16 shooter, and called by the Confederates that damn gun that the Yanks would load on Sunday and shoot all week. <laughs> in 1884, basically not even, tw uh, just over 20 years, 22 years after the Gatling gun, we had the first true single barreled machine gun. 1885, we had the first semi-automatic rifle, although man like is known for his uh, bolt actions. 1893, we have the first semi-automatic handgun. It was large, it was uncomfortable, it was bulky, it was underpowered, but it worked. Now, the first movie with a gun is debatable because it was either the cannon in A Journey to the Moon in 1902 or in the 1903, The Great Train Robbery. But 1918, the first submachine gun was invented by the British. 
1944 was the first true assault rifle called the STG-44 Sturmgewehr Storm Rifle, year four, 1944. In 1951, the first modern bullpup was invented. 50 years, or 60 years actually, earlier than today. And about 20 years before anyone really even was aware what a bullpup was. Then in the 1960s, Germany, of course, invented the G11, which was the first rifle to use a caseless ammunition, which has a block of plastic explosive, a primer, a bullet, and a plastic cap that hold it all in place. No metal casing. 